The halls of Congress, quiet, clean, official. Here's where the people's business supposedly gets done. How does money dictate policy in Washington? Well, uh, it's uh, unfortunate, but obviously it buys media time. Um, it also buys uh, constant uh, mail efforts. Uh, and also, obviously, you support uh, candidates who will ultimately come to the United States Congress who may vote your way. The largest contributors to political campaigns in America are the financial institutions. Uh, the second largest contributors are large real estate developers. Uh, that means that if you're running for office, you have to uh, get elected by promising to support policies that are supported by the real estate sector and by the uh, uh, financial sector that lends to the real estate sector. So the politicians are pretty much uh, bought. And the credit card industry is the leading profit engine of the banking industry, generating pre-tax earnings of over $30 billion annually. Some members of Congress do worry about the debt problem. They know we are living on borrowed money and borrowed time. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. They are making more dollars on the excessive fees than they would at any time on the alleged goods that you are supposed to be buying. Uh, this is, of course, uh, a, a uh, calamity waiting for uh, the Congress to wake up and provide some relief. Some have stood up to the card companies in fiery hearings. Since this bill was written, Mr. Speaker, Enron, WorldCom, Adelphia, United Airlines, LTV Steel, Kmart, Polaroid, Global Crossing, and filed bankruptcy, and they did not have to use a means test. Does the time oil has sale expired. Bill deal the gentlelady will suspend. Sharks? This is a travesty and should be defeated. Well, you know, when you spend uh, upwards of $4 million, uh, and I think that was a low number by the credit card companies, um, to get their bill, if you will, uh, this was one of the more well-funded legislative initiatives uh, that has probably come through the United States Congress. It's much worse than even Congresswoman Jackson Lee realizes. This new book reports that the bank spent $36 million lobbying on the bankruptcy bill. Credit card companies added another 13 million. Accounting firms put in another 6 million. And business associations added almost 100 million. That's $154 million in all just to get one bill passed. Ohio's Bob Ney is among the leading Congress members backing industry supported bills to undercut or preempt the power of states to regulate high interest loans. His days in office may be limited because of his links to the scandal involving super lobbyist Jack Abramoff. Most of the protections of uh, debtors are now to be found in the library. You can go and you can find the old legislation and the old laws, but part of the idea of free markets means that you've taken away the protection of people. Travis Plunkett is a veteran lobbyist for consumers, trying to counterbalance well-funded industry influence peddling. This is the Hart Senate office building. A lot of the discussion, a lot of the wheeling and dealing isn't done uh, you know, on the floor of the Senate or the floor of the House. It's done in these office buildings or in restaurants nearby. And the major decisions regarding whether legislation is green-lighted or red-lighted, they all, you know, that's all done behind the scenes. Yeah, lobbying uh, is, is to a large extent personal relationships. Former Georgia and Governor Roy Barnes encountered bipartisan lobbying to scuttle a predatory loan reform bill he signed. He said the credit card industry used personal pressure. They hire very good lobbyists who have long-standing relationships. One of the lobbyists that was, was uh, hired in some of the uh, predatory lending, was one of my best friends, and, and they knew that. Most of the lobbyists work from Washington's K Street in the law firms and government affairs offices of big companies. Some serve the 10 banks that control the credit card industry and do its bidding on Capitol Hill. The congressional committees that regulate the industry are usually dominated by members from the states where the credit card companies and other banks operate. It's not a partisan issue. Both sides, Democrats and Republicans, um, have fallen uh, into this protection of an industry that I don't really believe, uh, believe needs protection. That's bipartisan support, Democrat and Republican support. 
people who listened to the credit card companies, ignored consumer organizations and women's groups and civil rights groups and unions, and passed a very harsh bankruptcy law, came from both parties, both Republican and Democrat. So it is not a partisan issue. Well, what we've seen with this kind of financialization of the American economy, where the democratic system and so many democratic institutions have been co-opted and literally bought by the financial service industry is that we're seeing a big backlash from the American people. Up against the industry's economic clout and political access, you have a handful of consumer advocates like the Center for Responsible Lending's Josh Nasser. For every time that I'm able to, to meet with a member of Congress, um, you know, most times that member of Congress has met with tons of industry people already. Most people think uh, most policies are decided inside the Congress, right. you know, like you see on C-SPAN. But what really goes on up here uh, in terms of, you know, these issues we're discussing? Well, the truth is that a lot of decisions um, that are made here by the members of Congress and a lot of the conversations which a lot of these have yeah. with the members of Congress are made in um, clubs like here, which is the National Republican Club, Capitol Hill Club over here. Um, and there are tons of fundraisers every night. And this is where the lobbyists really get one-on-one -on -one time with the members of Congress. And a lot of decisions are made. A lot of deals are cut in, in these buildings right here, not in, in the Capitol. When the lobbyists come in, uh, what do they bring with them? Well, they have to make a contribution to the parents. A lot of times it's, you know, $500 to 1000 per individual, per event. Yay,